Hello and welcome to today's Ticket Source webinar. Now, today we're going to be showing you how to set up a seating plan on your event. Uh, we'll be showing you how to use the tools to set up any kind of custom seating plan depending on your requirements. Now, to show you what we're going to be ending up with in our um, today's session, here's an example of a stand up comedy night which I have linked to uh, my seating plan. Uh, we can see the description, images, um, and all the information. And the customer will have access to a book now button, and by clicking that, will take us into our seating plan graphic. We'll be showing you then how to set up a multi-section plan. Here we've got an example of a balcony and stalls, and we've got different pricing in the auditorium. Customer then can select the section they wish to sit and select how many tickets of which price category they would like to purchase. And clicking on the next option then will take your customer into the seating graphic, and we'll see here that we have row and seat number is allocated. We'll be showing you how to add in things like wheelchair positions and um, some seat comments. We can see restricted view seats here and down the bottom then the seats being held off for house seats as well. Once you're all live and up and running, the customer will be able to select the seats they wish to on the plan and go through the booking process as standard with reserved seating. Obviously, we're not limited to this uh, seating plan itself. This is just to give you an idea on how things work. Just to show you some examples then of other seating plans that we can do, here's the auditorium that we just are about to set up. There are some options to do larger options and a bigger concert hall, some multi-sections. We've got an even larger conference hall then with uh, lots of different rows. And you can either be a bit more creative and set up things like table seating for cabaret seating. So this is just to show you how the system can help you set up your event. So to get started with linking your seating plan to your event, I'm here within our event designer already. Now, if you want to see how to set up an event from scratch, we do have another webinar session that would take you through the whole event setup from start to finish. But as we're concentrating on seating plans alone here today, I've skipped forward a couple of stages in this process. And bear in mind that at any stage, you can also head to the events menu and go straight into new seating plan without linking it to an event at any point. So during the event setup process, you'll be asked here to add a new allocation. So if I click on this option, we're presented with two uh, options, either to offer the seats from a general admission quota, or in our instance, we're going to be allocating on a seating plan. You'll see here we've got the option to enable an orphan seat rule. This is the ability for the system to stop single seats being left in a row to avoid uh, people leaving gaps in between seats. There is then the ability to enable social distancing if you need to create a bubble of block seats around um, a booking as well. If we click then on the new seating plan option, you'll see the ability to add a new seating plan. So we're going to select that and then click Save Changes at the bottom of the page. And this will take us into our seating plan designer. Now you'll see here there's a few things that we're guided through to start populating. Firstly is a seating plan description. Now this is then a internal reference for the seating plan that you're going to be creating. In my uh, circumstance, it's going to be Ticket Source Auditorium. Bearing in mind you can have as many different seating plans as you want, maybe it's different seating arrangements. So this is an internal reference, you know which seating plan is what and which you'll be linking to future events to save you having to set them up each time. Underneath then we have the seating plan scale. Um, this is to show different kind of zoom options, depending on whether you have a very large uh, plan, you might want to use the extra small um, scale. But if you've got a small uh, seating plan, then you might just want to use a large option. We'll play around with that in a moment so you can see what it looks like. Underneath then we have the seating plan focal points. You'll see the de default is in a stage description. We've also got stage images and we've also got some sports pitches as well. If your event doesn't have a stage in its traditional form, you can just have a focal point with no image associated with it. I'm going to keep mine with a default stage um, description there. Underneath then we're going to click on add new seating plan to get started, and this is going to be adding in our first seating section. So here at the top left it's going to ask us then for the section description. In my example this is then going to be stools. And underneath then you have the ability to select the colour that you want that uh, block of seating to appear as. If you've got certain branding on your website, you might want to use that to match this, but you can pick any colour or type in any colour code to pick the colour of your choice. Now behind here then we've got our seating grid. Now what we can see on the left hand side is that we've got a row. Uh, we're going to be assigning and then we have the actual grid on the right hand side to actually put the seats in. So to begin with, I'm going to start labelling my rows. So I'm going to pop in row A at the bottom, B, C, D, E and F, just to keep it nice and simple. And then what we can do, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's a handy tool to add multiple seats. Now you can, in add, you can add individual seats if you want to, and we'll come on that in a moment. But if you click on add multiple seats, you'll see this key show down the bottom left hand corner. 
And here it's going to ask you the quantity of seats you want to and which direction you want to add them in, if you want seat numbers included or not, what the starting seat number is, and whether those numbers should increase or decrease from left to right. So in my situation, I'm going to have a simple stool section with um, seats to the left of the aisle, 10 seats there, and then 10 seats the other side of the aisle. So the quantity of seats I'm going to be adding in is 10. And if I click on add seats behind what we can see, then the system adds in one to 10 in row A quite nicely. Then what I can do then is just click on the cursor on row B, move back a row, click on add seats, and that will add row one to 10 on row B, and then just repeat that process as far back as you need to. Obviously, if your rows are not the same length, you can just adjust the quantity to match the number of seats that are in that row quite happily. As I said before, this is going to have an aisle in my stools, and so I'm going to basically leave a gap between the two blocks of seats. If I click now with my cursor on where A11 will be, and just change my starting seat number to be 11, down the bottom left, clicking on Add Seats will now add in 11 to 20, nice and simple. Clicking behind on the rows and basically repeating that process will then populate the remainder of the rows in that section. As I said before, you can add individual seats if you need to. This can be done by double clicking with your mouse onto a specific seat. And you'll see here, I'm just typing in on my keyboard the individual numbers of those rows. So if you have uh, a few kind of sporadic seats that you need to adjust and it's easier to do that individually, then feel free to type those in. If you make a mistake and add too many seats in, for example, all you need to do to remove an individual seat is double click on that seat and that will remove it from view. Quite nicely. If you make a mistake on an entire row, you'll see the ability down the bottom right to remove multiple seats. And in there, you would just uh, put how many uh, seats you wish to remove, and that will basically wipe them out for you quite easily. A couple of other things on the screen before we move on. You'll see up the top right hand corner, we've got a couple more options the ability to add house seats, wheelchair spaces, and seat comments. So, house seats are, for example, let's say you have ushers or sound desk seats that are never really sold. You do have the ability to book those in house, but they will be unavailable online. So, for my purposes, I'm going to say then the front two corner seats are represented as house. So, what I'm doing is clicking on those seats and ticking the box up the top right to make them a house seat. And you'll see on the plan they go a darker grey to show they're unavailable. Same principle then applies to our wheelchair position. So, I've got then two wheelchair positions at the back of the stools here, seats 11 and 10, the other side of the aisle, and just clicking on those seats and ticking the box will allocate, allocate them as a wheelchair position and they're nice and clear to the customer when booking online. And the last thing we've got here is seat comments. This is the ability to add in some comments about those seats. So an example might be restricted view. So what I'm going to then do is just type in the uh, message I want to make clear to the customer on the top right. And you'll see the option uh, to show that on the seating plan later. Same with F1 over the other side. I'm just going to paste in that text. And that means the customers know that these two seats, when they're booking online, is restricted view. So they've got all the information they need before making their booking. So once you're happy that all your changes are done, then scroll down to the bottom and save your changes, bearing in mind that you can always go back to modify things later. Now, this has taken us back to the seating plan designer. Now, before we look at the layout of things and where they are positioned, I'm going to add in a second section. So what we can do, clicking on the orange button again, add a new seating plan section. And in here, then we're going to add in a balcony section. So again, I'm doing the same principles, typing in the description. I'm going to pick a green color for this one today, and I'm going to add in a few rows into here. These are going to be double rows in our balcony. So you can see I've got double A, double B, double C, double D, and double E. Uh, I'm going to go through a bit faster this time, adding my multiple seats as we did before. These are shorter rows, so there's eight seats in this row, and I'm going to pop in one to eight through all of the seats in the background. And then I'm going to skip the other side of the aisle. This is going to be, then be a starting seat number of nine using the same principles as before, but just adjusting those back as we did earlier. So as you can see, once you're competent in how to use these tools, you can be quite quick. Here's an example where I've made a, an obvious mistake. So I'm going to remove that seat 16, click on the right starting seat and add my seats again. And it's just tidy those up nicely for you. So scroll to the bottom, save your changes. And again, we're back in the seating plan designer. Uh, what we can do here is that we can actually start moving these sections into the right position for your plan. You saw me mention earlier the focal point or the stage option. So I'm actually going to change um, the, the stage just to show you what that looks like. So here then we've got a graphic of a stage instead. And I'm also going to change then the seating plan scale. So we're on medium at the moment. But because it's quite a small uh, auditorium, I'm going to set this to be large just to maximize 
space on the screen. And we can see here that it zooms in quite nicely. So all we need to do now is position our sections into the right space. Don't worry about where they are positioned on the screen. On the booking process, we remove all the white space around it. So as long as the stage and sections are orientated uh, nicely amongst themselves, then that's all you need to do. Okay. As I said before, you can do lots of other different seating plans and using these same tools, you can apply all sorts of different seating. And there are some tools, if you hover over the sections of you'll see there's some rotate arrows. So if we look at the balcony section, we can see here that you can rotate them onto different angles if you want to. We've also got the ability to copy a section. So if you've got seating that is kind of repeated for different options, clicking on the copy button then will replicate that section. And you'll see now that we have the copy button. If you don't need a section, hovering over that section again, you'll see the bin icon, and we can just remove that quite happily um, to strip that off as you need to. Okay, so there's our seating plan all nicely set up. All I need to do now is scroll to the bottom and save changes. So we're now back in our event designer, and as you can see, it's linked the uh, seating plan that we've just set up there, our balcony and stools. Now, all we need to do is finish this off is to add in some price categories. So for mine, then I've got slightly more expensive tickets in the balcony and slightly reduced tickets in the stools. They could be the same price throughout though. So clicking on add new price category would take us into our prices, and I'm going to pop in an adult ticket then at £12 and save changes. And then underneath, and I'm going to add a second price option in that same section. But this is going to be a concession ticket. And then this is going to be priced at a slightly reduced rate of £10. Okay. And then underneath, we're going to populate the stalls pricing. Then, so I'm going to add a new price category in here. And then this is going to be another adult ticket. But it's slightly reduced then at £10 in the stalls, saving our changes. Then add another new price category then for our last concession price. And this is going to then be an eight pounds ticket, saving the changes on there. And we'll see now we've got everything that we need to be able to activate our event. So if we click on the activate event button, I'll just show you very briefly what we've done now. So clicking on the house icon, top left hand corner will take you to your dashboard and you've got your ticket shop URL presented at the top center of the page. This is the event that we've just been setting up. If I click on book now, here then is that section that we've set up the balcony and stalls. Here are our price categories that we've just linked to our own event. And clicking on the next option then will take us into the seat graphic. Here are our wheelchair spaces. Here are our seat comments for restricted view. These are the house seats that we assigned and the customer can select which seats they would like to book and proceed through the rest of the booking process. So thank you for joining today's webinar on seating plans. I hope you found that useful. As we said, Please feel free to play around with your own seating plans. You should be able to use those tools to design any type of seating plan for your needs. Bear in mind though that we are always on hand with our support service. We offer a free support service. So feel free to use either the online knowledge base articles that we have online, or you can get in touch with us through email or um, telephone or online chat. So bear in mind that we're on hand should we ever be needed. Thank you very much. <laughs>